Hello and welcome back to the Champions League Challenge on Football Manager 2022 where we are of course still in charge of Stau Bucharest in the top tier of Romania. Now, last episode was a, it was a roller coaster ride. If you haven't seen that yet, please go back and check that out now and come back and watch this one. As in today's episode, we are going to take a look at all the transfer dealings and there's been a lot of it that we have been doing in this summer before the start of yet another season in the top tier of Romania. We'll also play our opening game of the season, which is coincidentally against the side that we beat in the final game of last season, FC Voluntari. So we'll see if we can, can beat them again, hopefully, to start a season this time round. But we are going to start with those transfers. And we'll start with uh, a few of the, the more well-known players that have left us since last season. So we'll start with a man that we knew was always going to leave us, as he was just a, a loan signing for the one year, the Finnish centre-back Richard Jensen. He went back to his parent club, De Grafschap, and was promptly released and is now playing for uh, a Finnish side, SJK. He played a fair, a fair whack of games for us last season, 23 times, not really performing that brilliantly as part of a defensive three. And yeah, he's, he wasn't really a player that was interested in signing on a permanent deal. Another loan player that's gone back to his parent club is Darius Grus, who has gone back to Faro Constanta. Did think about re-signing this guy this year, but I can't really afford to pay what Faro Constanta would want for him. He was a, he was a decent player at centre midfield for us. He played eight times. I believe we signed him in the January. So decent showing of eight times, 6.97 average rate and one assist and a player of the match in there as well. But yeah, we can't afford him. Next player to leave us is one that you also knew about. Vincenzo de Sommer left us at the end of his contract at the end of last season. He has moved to Palermo over in Italy. A man who spent four years with us and they were four pretty decent years. He um, this is his best season in the 22-23 season, which was our first one in the top tier. It was seven average rating, even getting three goals from centre-back there. Very impressive from Vincenzo. And he was a, a pretty much never present across his four years with us. And I just felt like it was time for him to move on. He was, he'd, he'd reached the peak of his career and I feel like he was just going to go a bit downhill from there. So we didn't resign him. He's moved to Palermo. Good luck to him. Next up is another man who was with us for four years. It's Dimsiu Halep, the striker, who was signed just before our first season in Casa Liga 1 as well, just like Vincenzo de Summer was. He had his best goal scoring season a couple of seasons ago when he scored 10 in 23 games still managed to score two goals last season in only 12 starts didn't really play well though 6.54 average rating last season and i don't think he was ever really good enough to play in the top tier despite that season where he did score 10 and the season before where he scored nine i don't think he um he really lived up to his potential so you can see he's currently a free agent so hopefully he'll find a club somewhere in romania that wants him Next on the, the players that have left us is a man who, he was style through and through, five years he spent with us, Stefan Passionelli was with us all the way back in our Liga 2 days and he has been released, he's gone to FC Buzau who are one of the teams that we faced a good few times in the opening couple of seasons in this save. Uh, they're currently in the third tier of Romania, they were in the top tier of Romania I believe in the first season um, as we did face them in the Romanian Cup. But I'm getting sidetracked. Stefan Passionel played quite a few games for us. Um, not too many in that first season in Liga 2, but he was a big performer when he did play. Three goals, 7.1 average rating, and then a steady amount of appearances in the following seasons. Up until last year where he, he didn't get as much game time. Only 11 appearances, one assist, and an average rate of 6.78. So it was probably time for him to move on. Next up, I don't want to spend much time on this guy. We signed him. Um, as his scout, my scout said that he was going to be a, a lot better than he actually was. Ayub Abu, um, he spent two years with us, played 12 times, didn't really do very well, was out on loan at Renaissance Samamra last season, eventually signed for them at the end of his contract. That's enough about him. Don't want to talk about him anymore. And then the final player that has been released, that we'll talk about anyway, there was uh, quite a few youngsters that have gone as well, but they're not really worth talking about. They only had like a handful of appearances between themselves. Radu Coxis uh, himself has only he only played twelve times for us, but he was technically part of the first team. So he has left us after four years at the club. He was a man that was he, he came in our first youth intake with Stau just before the or it might have been even during the first Liga One campaign. 
He played once in the 23-24 season and 11 times for us in the following season. Three goals, two assists, not not too bad. 7.06 average rating. Then he went on, on loan to CSM Bacau. Did pretty well there. And now he has gone permanently to Liga 3 side CSM Reseta. So best of luck to the youngster. So now it's time for the sales. And the first of them is Lucas Urea. His contract was expiring with us at the end of this coming season. And I decided it was time to cash in on him. He wasn't really as good as... It, it, pretty similar to Ayubabu, actually. He wasn't as good as my scout initially said he was. Um, I think I've changed my scout since then. So I hope I have. I did make some staff changes in the preseason. So I'm pretty sure there's a new scout. Or at least there has been a new scout since then. But Lucas Urea, yeah, he's his heading, marketing, tackling, all brilliant. But everything else, it's just he's just not great. And he's ended up going to Progressal Spartak. Um, I can see there he's actually in the under 19, so they don't seem to be rating him too highly either. Uh, he's gone for two thousand pounds. Just happy to get anything for him. Um, I think we signed him for a free. We did. We got him for a free. Sold him for two k. Nice tiny bit of profit. He only played eight times for us, and he wasn't very good. The next sale is another man that was only with us for one season, signed last year uh, at this stage of the season. Darius Murasan, the left back, he has moved to Metalul Butau. He's moved for £33,000, possibly rising to £42,000 after 50 league games with a 20% profit from next sale clause. His contract was expiring at the end of the season. I didn't think he was good enough. Hopefully he can do something for Metalul Butau in the third tier of Romania, but I think that is a pretty good deal. Signed him on a free from Concordia Chiajna, and he's gone for a good 30k. And the next sale is a big one. So we said goodbye to Stefan Passionel, as I told you a few minutes ago, but we also said farewell to Emilian Passionel. He he spent a good, good long while with us. Six seasons, I believe, in total. I'm pretty sure he was here before I joined. Um, signed on a free from FCSB. He did very well for us. Uh, pretty solid performer. His best performance is probably in that opening season in Liga 2, to be fair. Um, pretty average the rest of the time, but he did manage to come up with a few goals and assists for us. And his contract was coming up. Looked at him. Didn't think he was good enough to continue staying here. Thought I could probably get some money from him because Voluntari were originally interested in him. We did have a, a deal of £175,000 agreed with them, but Passinal couldn't agree terms. And then Concordia Chiajna, the highest I could get them to offer was £150,000. So he has gone to Concordia Chiajna for just £150,000, no clauses or anything like that. He's gone there. And again, good luck to him. Next sale is our backup goalkeeper, Costel Popescu. Again, it didn't look like he was going to reach his potential and... His contract was coming up, thought we could cash in on him, and we did. We sold him for £14,000, rising to 18 k after 20 league games with a 40% profit from next sale clause, which you never know, might get us something. He is only 19, but not too hopeful on that one. Liga 3 is where his new club, Dacia Unirea Braila, played. You can see he didn't actually play for us at all, but we, we managed to get 14 k for him. And then the next two players are youngsters whose contracts were expiring at the end of this coming season as well. And I basically just cashed in on them. 12k is how much we sold Antonio Yanuli to Otolulu Galati for possibly rising to £15,000 or £14,900, I should say, after 10 league games with a 20% profit from next sale clause. As I said, it wasn't good enough. Young player and wanted to get some money from him. And then the final sale is another youngster. It's Konstantin Rusu. He has left us to go to Alma Sibiu for £12,000. He was, was he part of our youth intake or was he here already? I can't actually remember. You can see he played three times for us anyway in the first season. Um, five times for us actually last season, but didn't play great at all. So perhaps Liga 2 is a good place for him to go with CSC Selimbar. And then we also have a few players that we have loaned out as well. So we'll ignore the top one for the time being as he is a, a new incoming and we'll, we'll get on to them in a little bit. But Niku Dinu, who is a 17-year-old fullback, has gone to Agricola Borsia, who are in Liga 2 of Romania with the agreed playing time of a regular starter. He was only 17, so hopefully some regular football in the second tier is going to help him to develop uh, a, a bit. And I'll... 
I'll show you him. You can see he's already going up in quite a few attributes. His potential ability is only three stars. So could be a borderline decent Liga 1 player, I'm thinking. So if we can get him to improve a little bit, his contract is up when? Is it up at the end of the next season? It's up in a few years. So if we can get him to improve a bit, he might even be good enough to, to stay with us. If not, we'll try and sell him on like we did with a few of the other youngsters. David Nika has gone on loan to CS Amara. I was trying to sell this guy. He is out of contract at the end of the season. He doesn't look too great. And he's, yeah, he's going to leave us more than likely unless he performs some miracles at CS Amara, who are in the fourth tier of Romanian football. And Nikolai Ursu is his teammate at CS Amara this season. He's one that I'm going to keep an eye on. I haven't made my mind up on him yet. His contract is also up in well, his is actually up at the end of 2028 so we've got a bit more time with him but i'm i'm not sure where we stand with him next up is our cryu who has of course played a few times for us uh the young center back he is going on or he's gone on loan to Asselt bucharesti of the fourth tier we're going to get rid of him um you can see his contract is up at the end of 2028 so that's 27 28 season so not the end of this season but the end of next season we're going to try and sell him at the end of this season for a bit of cash to um I, I just don't think he's good enough for us and then finally george contra has been loaned to third tier coltair brashov for the season we're going to see how he develops but it's likely that he will be leaving us in the transfer window of next season and then just before we get into some contract news and incomings dennis farkas he's a, a youngster you'll probably not have seen him much he's not very good. We're gonna we're trying to get rid of him. His contract is up at the end of this season. We're trying to sell him for anything we can. Um, it's not working so far. So we'll see how we get on. We might end up just leaving on a free, to be honest, at the end of the season. But I thought I'd point that out. And then Antonio Balabuk is another one that we're just trying to move on. Um, you can see his asking price is thirty k. I've I've just started offering him out, so that will no doubt drop to you. 5k maybe even less uh, before anyone actually puts an offer in now for some good news so jeremy van mullum who is one of our best players has signed a new deal which keeps him at the club until the end of the 28 29 season so he signed a three-year contract extension he's with us until then he's on 1.3k a week that's one of the one of the higher earners at the club and very happy to have him signed on for another few years and now it is time for the incomings, and there's plenty of them. We'll start with Dennis Radu, who I think I showed you in the last episode. We've signed him. He is a right-sided attacking midfielder. We've signed him for £39,000. He's going to offer extra competition, hopefully, to Stefan Jagici and Claudio Donos at right wing this season. He's a decent player already. Still got room for improvement as well. Pretty balanced um, relatively balanced anyway, in terms of his attributes. But yeah, hopefully he can do something for us if called upon next up is cosmin akim a 30 year old central defender signed on a free um, from fc arges he looks very good indeed he should be uh, one of our starting center backs i would say alongside oliver casey and van mullen at center back but we'll see how he gets on he as i said looks very good he's in his prime years according to our coaches report and hopefully he can give us a good couple of seasons before he started dropping off next up is a very young right back ibrahim Traore, brought in to give a bit of competition to tafari moore in that position and it looks like ibrahim Traore could very well be our starting right back this season he's already an important player according to the coach three and a half star rating with a potential of getting up to five stars which isn't surprising because he's only 19 years old he's capped by burkina faso i think that nationality is burkina bay yeah, so he's he's already been capped by the Burkina Faso full national side, uh, eight under twenty caps as well, and he's 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 looked okay. He's he looks like a decent player with plenty of room for growth as well. Next up with Darius Murasan leaving, he of course was one of our backup left backs last season alongside the loan loony centre back Richard Jensen. Adnan Islamovic has been brought in, a Serbian national, twenty nine years old, just to give a bit of competition. He's He's okay. Um, he's not going to improve. Obviously, he's 29, but he's he's a decent backup option if Soren Serban gets injured or suspended, which I think may come into um, happening today. That's not really the phrase I wanted to use. But Soren Serban, I think, is suspended for today's game as well as a few others. So 
yeah, bear with me on that. Next incoming was Nicolas Popescu, who signed on a free from Farrell Constanta. He's a centre midfielder, 23 years old. He looks okay. Uh, he's been brought in as backup for Marchese and Badea, um, who will probably be our starting centre midfielders this season, unless we manage to get anyone else in. That's a hint for what position we're looking at getting players in on. Um, but yeah, he, lo he looks okay. He's got potential for growth as well. So we'll see how he does. 12 passing, nice first touches, decent in technique as well. Um, just needs to improve on a few other things and he should be okay. Next up, we have another defender and uh, a 24-year-old Portuguese defender, Zé Pedro. He can play at centre-back or left-back. He's been brought in to give a bit more depth in those positions. Uh, it was mainly brought in as a centre-back, but obviously it's nice to have more than two options. At left back, I of course mentioned Adnan Islamovic as a left back cover for Soren Serban, but Zepedru can definitely do the job as well. Three star rated at both left back and centre back, and pretty decent attribute as tackling and marking, especially his heading could do with some work, but yeah, pretty decent. Next up is a man that was signed basically just to be a backup to the backup at striker. We've obviously got Milos Kukolj and David Min as our two main strikers. Uh, Mark Barrett has been brought in on a free from Tarazona to just provide that extra backup. Sort of the Dinsu Halep role that Halep was playing the past few seasons. Uh, he looks pretty decent, don't get me wrong. He's got 13 finishing, 12 first touch, 13 headed, very nice indeed. Um, but yeah, he's he's got a bit of potential, so we'll see how he does. Um, you never know, he might turn out to be our starting striker this season if he plays well when he gets a chance. Now, next up is the man that I showed you when I was running through the loans, Alexander Kessler. He's an Austrian national. He's got five under 21 caps. He's only 18 years old. He is a left winger. He was released by Newcastle at the end of last season. We signed him for free and immediately sent him out on loan to second tier Argoshul Michaleshti. And I believe he is going to be getting regular first team football. I think that was put in the, the contract doesn't tell me here, but I'm pretty sure it was. So hopefully that's going to help him develop um, playing at a relatively high tier. And you never know, he might actually be back with us starting next season and be starting for us. A very exciting young prospect, Alexander Kessler. Now we're on to the final two signings. And the first of those is Raul Torrente, the centre-back. Well, he can play um, centre-back, defensive midfield, midfield centre, left-back. He can play many, many places, but he has been brought in mainly to play at centre-back to give a bit more cover for that position. Obviously, we play with three centre-backs, so I like to have a decent amount of them so that we can rotate through if people need a rest or anything. Raul Torrente, Spanish 25-year-old, looks pretty decent. His tackling is a standout in terms of his technical attributes. Heading the marking could do with a bit more. Um, position decisions, nice, and his pace is okay as well. Um, 25 years old, of course, not going to improve that much, but he's, he's decent. He's decent. And then the final signing that we've made so far is Rudy Bertin, the French 22-year-old goalkeeper, who is currently two stars, being signed as backup, um, not even cup goalkeeper, just emergency backup. So he's not expecting to get any game time. But if he does get some game time, that will, of course, help his development. And you never know, we might have him challenging Tom and Eager for that number one jersey at some point in the future. We'll see. Now, we are still on the hunt for a few more players. I'd ideally like to get another centre-back in just for extra cover, another centre midfielder, again, for the same reason, and a left winger for exactly the same reason. Um, obviously, Passy now leaving us. He's just a bit short at left wing. Um, so there are offers out for uh, Felix, Felix Lenhardt, who is he's a promising youngster, so he's not really covering that centre-back role. So I don't think he'd be good enough just yet. But... Um, Pretty similar to Kessler, actually. I'd quite like to sign him and then loan him out immediately to uh, a second-tier club to, to get him to hopefully reach this possible five-star potential that he has. We've also got an offer out there for Gianni Nzepe, who is a 19-year-old Frenchman. I was um and ahhing for a very long time about whether or not to bring this guy in. He looks very good. He's got He's already a two-and-a-half-star player in centre midfield and 19 years old. Potential of up to five stars. The only downside was that where is it there it is he primarily looks out for his own interests and can be labeled a bit of a mercenary so i wasn't sure if we were going to have a bit of a, a drama queen on our hands but i feel like it's a risk 
that I am more than willing to take for someone of his potential quality. And then the final guy that we've got a, an offer out on is Gabriel Plumbuito, already a two and a half star rated left sided winger, potential of up to five stars, capped at under 19 levels for Romania, and would hopefully provide some cover at left wing. If we get all of these three sign ins done, well, actually, yeah, if we get three of these sign ins done, we'll just be on the lookout for a, another backup centre back, um, which I am still looking for. Lots of players coming in on trial usual sort of thing but yeah that is our transfer dealings so far so we've played four friendlies in the pre-season in fact we haven't we played more than that because there was one at the that's classed as being at the end of last season that was against Mia Veni who are a team who are newly promoted to the top tier of Romania this season and they actually won their first league game as well against Academica Clincini in the, this match week they played the day before, the day before that, can't really remember. But we, we lost 1-0 to them. Um, we played our first team in the first half for 45 minutes. Reserves played the second half for 45 minutes. Goal came when the reserves were on. So, yeah, I'm not really too disappointed in that. We did the same thing again for the game against CSC Salimba. Also, we didn't have our, our new sign-ins for the game against Miavini. They were, I think most of them were here for the game against Salimba. Uh, Nil-nil draw again. We dominated the first half of the first team, second half reserves. A bit sketchy. Next up was a friendly with Spartak Werner. We drew this one 1-1. One, one. It was the reserves in the second half that actually managed to get the breakthrough. Dragos Matash scoring our first goal of the preseason. It was a nice header as well. And then their equaliser in se second half injury time was ridiculous. Um, one of our defenders cleared the ball off the line and hit it straight into the back of the head of Costel Pipescu, who was just getting up from a save he'd made. So, yeah, don't know what was going on there. 1-1 one, one draw. Then we faced September Sofia at home. We won 3-1. The first team played 60 minutes in this one, so Stefan Dragici opened the scoring on the 49th minute, and then our reserves were on for the second half. David Min scoring a penalty, and Jeremy Van Mullen getting a goal on the 85th minute. And then our final friendly was against PFK Dobrudsha. And in this one, the first team played until the 75th minute and then the reserves came on. So Stefan Dragici and David Min getting on the score sheets for us and then the two goals being conceded by our reserve side. Dragos Matash, our fourth choice centre midfielder this season, got injured in this game and is out with a broken ankle for another three to five months. So disappointing news for the youngster. Hopefully he doesn't get too affected by that. You can see his um, attributes are still going up apart from his stamina. Um, so hopefully it doesn't affect his development too much. And then that finally brings us on to today's first game of the season against FC Voluntari. We're away from home. It's 12th versus 13th in the league. It's the first game of the season. It's, that positions aren't important. But this is how everyone's done so far. FCSB, Gazmetan Medias, and as I said, Miaveni have all picked up three points from their opening game. We are hoping to do the same. One thing I do you just want to show you is the season preview. So every single year we've been in the top tier, we have been in either 15th or 16th in the season preview. This year, we're up to 13th, so it's a small bit of progress. Hopefully that means we're going we're gonna to do all right this season. So ahead of this opening game of the season, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a very much changed lineup from the final game of last season. So we've got Tommy Eager and Goal, as we did, let, as we did then, Tafari Moore remains at right back. But then we've got Cosman, Aki, Moral Torrente and Jeremy Van Mullen all playing in central defence. Jeremy Van Mullen, the only man there of the, the three at centre-back that started the final game of last season. Zipedro is at left-back today. We do have a couple of suspensions. Oliver Casey and Soren Serban are suspended, believe for picking up too many yellow cards. Serban, if I remember rightly, actually got sent off in one of the final two games of last season. So that's why he's not there. In centre midfield, we've got Federico Marchese and Julian Bedea are starting centre midfielders for the season, unless we get someone else in. At right wing is Claudio Danos, who is our token under-22 player, as he has been for the majority of his career with us so far, alongside Jovan Mitrovic on the left wing. And then Milos Kukolj is up front on the bench. There is space for possible debutants, Rudy Bertan, Adnan Islamovic and Ibrahim Chiriori, as well as Denis Radu and Nicholas Popescu. We've got David Min on the bench and Stefan Dragici there to play in our fluid counter-attack formation as we did at the end of last season. Hopefully, we are going to get off to a positive start. So it looks like we've got a, a full house here for Voluntari's game against us. Um, there's the league table. Showing you it already. 
hopefully we can get ourselves up to the the top four with a victory playing in yellow today voluntary playing there baby blue free kick for voluntary it's george with it he shoots and tom and punches it away and ricardini was there for the rebound and we are one goal down after seven and a half minutes. Ricardinho with a tap in. Tom and Iga, terrible goalkeeper, and should have really held on to that. I don't know what he's doing, parrying it out in such a dangerous area. And then Ricardinho just with a tap in. 1 0 Voluntari. They're looking for payback from the last episode. Dusso with a throw in on the right hand side finds Campbell. It doesn't really look like we've really started. Um, playing today, Zepedro intercepts that ball and we can possibly launch an attack of our own. Van Mullen forward to Badea. Back to Van Mullen. Hopefully this is going to be a, a chance for us here. Zepedro with the ball on the left-hand side forward to Mitrovic who is going to take on his man, it looks like. Sides against it, plays it back to Zepedro. Van Mullen's got the ball again. Plenty of um, ball action for Jeremy Van Mullen early on here. Mitrovic is going to take on his man this time, running down the left-hand side. There's a man in the box if he wants to find him. There's two in the box, actually. Finds Kukolj and Milos Kukolj. Gets Stau's opening goal of the season. An excellent finish. Mitrovic with an excellent run down the left wing. Played it along the ground with Kukolj in the centre of the box. And he finished it beautifully. So we were only behind for two and a half minutes there. Hopefully we can, can turn this round. Excellent ball from Mitrovic. Kukolj. Should really never miss from there. Corner. Goal scorer to take it. Kukolj along the ground. Mitrovic. Is he fouled? I think he is. I think it's a penalty. It's Kukolj and Mitrovic linking up again. This time the other way around. And Mitrovic should, I think, have got us a penalty here. They're checking it on VAR. And it's been given. Penalty kick to turn the game around. After half an hour, Milos Kukolj looking to get his second goal of the game. Place the ball on the spot. Can he do it? Milos Kukolj. He's hit the post. That was a terrible penalty. And then FC Voluntari get the ball clear. Milos Kukolj, what are you doing? Raul Torrente is not having the best of times out there playing Libero. So I'm wondering whether if we put Van Mullum in there instead, as he was playing Libero for the majority of the last few seasons, and then move Raul Torrente to centre of defence, that might help solve that issue. Now... We have been on top. Oh, no. We've got an injury. Julian Bede has been injured. So it looks like the youngster, Nicholas Popescu, is going to get a run out today in centre midfield. What is wrong with Bede? He's got a potential foot injury. Not great for one of our better performers today. What I was going to say was, since that voluntary goal, we have we've probably been the better side, I would say, in this game. And it looks like Tafari Moua has picked up an injury as well. So this isn't going well. Lots of injuries going around. Ibrahim Priore is going to come on for Tafari Moore. Elsewhere, Torrente is still on a 6.2. We don't have another centre-back on the bench. We've got Zepedro. Do we do that? Do we? I think we're going to, yeah, we're going to put Zepedro, swap Zepedro and Torrente around and then take Torrente off and bring on Adnan Islamovic at left-back. He's looking a bit nervous, so we'll give him a bit of a, a team talk. So I'll tell him to have fun to try and calm him down. Didn't really work, so we'll just confirm that and hope for the best. So there is the full-time whistle. It's all square here. 1-1, one, one, one goal apiece. And we could have won that. Kukolj, if you'd not missed that penalty, we would have won this. That's a bit disappointing, but at least we didn't get beaten, I guess. So that result leaves us in eighth place in the league, which, to be quite honest with you, I would take at the end of the season. I would take eighth place. I just don't want to be anywhere near those bottom four spots come the end of the season. But of course, it is still early days. So looking ahead to the next episode and we are going to play the games against FCSB and Politenica Timisoara. The, be the, the games that fall in the middle of the 30 game season. So hopefully we do well up until that point. Again, 1-1 one, one draw, pretty decent start to the season. We're just getting used to things. Hopefully we, we manage to pick up some points and don't get dragged into a relegation battle like we have done the past few seasons but that is it for this episode i hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out hit the notification bell to stay notified and i'll see you next time